Hello, I'm Odin, and this time I'm going to make another requested prop. It's Han Solo's blaster. This week is the 40th anniversary of Star Wars, and I don't mean the first installment of some grandiose plan, but a single movie that was released without Roman numerals. And where Han shot first. I'm going to start with some pictures. The cutting mat let me scale these images to full size. Now, you can find good Lucasfilm images as well, but the guys at the Replica Prop Forum have the accuracy of this prop down. Now, I'm not trying to make a museum piece, but I do want something better than an undersized repainted toy. First, I'll make the flash suppressor from 1 inch Schedule 80 PVC and an automotive funnel. The round portion is 1 and 7 8 inches long, so I cut a piece 1 and a quarter inches, turn it on its side, and use a bandsaw to carefully cut knurls into the sides all the way around. To make the larger knurled piece, I try something a little dangerous, and I chuck a router bit into my drill press. On another piece of PVC, I make a mark every 7 millimeters, and that is where I route the edge to get that bullet shape. I press lightly against the router bit, but hold the PVC firmly to the table. I don't really recommend this trick. I mean, it worked, but... I'll cut down the new piece to about 5 eighths of an inch. Then I cut two more pieces of pipe and take a section out of the side. This lets me decrease the diameter to fit inside the original pipe and glue them together. And by adding a second layer inside, I can then fit a piece of PEX pipe for the barrel. I use 3 quarter inch PEX as it was the closest to the diameter of the original barrel on the blaster. I have an automotive funnel from Dollar Tree that I cut down for the front part. I'll super glue it in place and then mark and drill out the 48 holes. After that, I can cut the PEX to the right length. I plan to make the main body of the blaster from foam because I like foam, but it needs a solid core, so it doesn't warp and so all the parts have a solid base that it can attach to. I thought about wood, but I decided to use a quarter inch ABS plastic sheet instead. I got this piece from Tap Plastics from the scrap bin. Actually, both plastic sheets in this build came from that scrap bin. It took some measuring and some adjustments to change the hammer's position on the back and to add the pistol slide to the top. Plus, I made a tab to glue the barrel to. I used the bandsaw to cut my shape because the scroll saw cuts too fine and melts the ABS back together after cutting. So, to cut out the trigger, I set the plastic in a vise and use a jeweler's saw. I put one of my spiral cut blades into the jeweler's saw, which made all the rounded cuts very easy to do. I'll do a little filing on the edges to clean it up and bullnose the trigger. ABS plastic has a texture on one side, kind of like foam, so I sand that off and then sand the glossy side so contact cement can hold better. I drill the holes that are in the hammer and in that key ring part. Then I use a styrene plastic sheet to make the trigger guard a little bigger and make the safety switch, to which I add a knurled knob that I saved from something a long, long time ago. The ABS is six millimeters or a quarter inch thick, so I'll need to add seven millimeters of foam to both sides to make it two centimeters thick. And I'll do that with three layers of craft foam glued on with contact cement. The first layer of blue three millimeter foam matches the level of the white plastic. A second black 2mm layer will cover all of the plastic, and then a third 2mm layer adds the panels and boxes to the sides of the blaster. I cut each layer just a little oversized, and then I can grind them down with a Dremel to match the ABS core. I add some additional details on the pistol sides and to the sight that's on the top. To make that iconic broom handle grip, I glue some 6mm foam to a piece of scrap half-inch floor mat and these I can cut out with a scroll saw. I glued them together with texture side up as I was planning on sanding it all down to the round shape anyway. I thought the belt sander would be the quickest, and it was, but I had trouble holding on to the foam parts. That worked really well. No real damage was done to the foam, or to me, so I'll glue the foam onto the ABS. Of course, when sanding the foam, they got it a little smaller, so I grind down the ABS with a Dremel to match the new shape of the foam. The grips have a nice parallel line texture carved into them, which is kind of easy to do with foam. I'll just carefully cut the lines lightly into the foam and then melt them open with a heat gun. To watch this in person is like magic. I also use a heat gun on the sides to round off all the cut edges and to help seal the foam for painting. To glue the barrel on, I mix up some green epoxy putty and mash it over the tab I cut in the ABS core.
I plan to make the scope entirely from plastics. The main body is a piece of half-inch bell-end PVC, which has a flared end trimmed to size. To make the scope mount, I use a piece of three-quarter inch PVC, then cut one side off and glue it in place. Spring clamps will keep it closed until the glue sets. The upright is cut from the same eighth inch styrene plastic. I want three layers for the right thickness, with the top piece being the most elaborate. For the knurled knobs that hold it all together, I just super glue some washers together, plus a set for the rangefinder knob on the top of the scope. I will simply screw the scope to the ABS core using some quarter inch screws. A small piece of plastic will be the base for the rangefinder knob, with a small screw, some lock washers, and more super glue. I cut some small pieces of ABS and rounded them off in the belt sander for the side of the scope mount. For the front grill, I'll just use a piece of one inch split loom tubing. I'll super glue it in place, and then I added some hot glue as well later. I didn't like the way the center screw fit on the scope mount, so I took it off, countersunk the hole on the back side, put the screw in backwards, and super glued the washers onto the screw. So I have a little bit of concern over the thin strips that hold the scope on. Now, it doesn't feel bad, but it is just a little bit wiggly. So what I want to do is add a couple of very thin pieces of plastic to the back, and that will take the play out of the scope. I tape up the foam to protect it when I paint all the plastic with black spray paint. Then I can spray the barrel silver. Once dry, I tape the barrel to protect that and spray the rest of the gun with three coats of Plastidip. This will seal the foam and it won't crack like a heavy coat of spray paint would. Now I get to weather the blaster. The look of Star Wars is what got me started on weathering everything. I really like that used universe look. So I start by dry brushing some pewter silver and then do more selective bright silver dry brushing. I can also add the mystery disc to the side. Dry brushing is a technique where you dip the brush in paint, but you wipe most of it off onto a paper towel. Then just brush on the edges and the raised areas to create highlights or a chipped paint look. Now the actual scope has brass rings in the front and the back, plus the knob on the top is brass. So I dry brush all of that with a golden color. The broom handle grip is wood, so a few uneven coats of brown craft paint is applied. Now the barrel is too bright, so I do a heavy black wash of craft paint and water, sometimes mopping it around with a paper towel. I will also add some black wash to the grip to break up the uniform color. Long term, the acrylic isn't going to stick that well to the spray paint, so I can take it outside and seal it with some clear coat. Then I can remount the scope. Most of the materials I picked up locally, although some of the parts I had saved from who knows where. But I'll put a part list in the description. Now this is just one of the three Star Wars builds that I'm going to be doing this week. So be sure to subscribe to the Beyond Geek channel, where I'm going to make a combat-ready lightsaber with Brittany Barger. And the lightsaber is easily one of the most requested props here or on DIY Prop Shop. Also, I'm going to pull a video from my past and make a thermal detonator from Return of the Jedi. Now I know there are many other ways that you can make Han Solo's blaster, but this is how Odin makes. I now have a Patreon page, which will give you the chance to win props that are made right here in Odin Makes. And it's the only place where I'll talk about my upcoming builds. If you like the video or have ideas for something for me to make, please leave them in the comments below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture at odin at odinmakes.com. Damn it! <laughs>